Now, from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Welcome to Facing South Florida. I'm Jim DeFeedy, and on Monday, the Florida Legislature will meet in a special session to address the homeowner's insurance crisis. In a moment, you will hear from State Senator Jeff Brandis about what we can expect out of Tallahassee next week. What's not on the agenda is doing anything to make condos safer by improving and requiring inspections. Later in the show, you will hear why, and you will also hear from the parents of someone who died in Surfside about why they placed the blame on Governor Ron DeSantis. He was there every day, every day at the press conference. For three weeks. For three weeks. Uh, and then there's crickets. We have, have you seen him on the news about Surfside, speaking about Surfside? I've heard him speak about many things. I have not heard him speak of Surfside. You will hear more from them later, but we begin with the property insurance crisis and my interview with Republican Senator Jeff Brandis, who pushed for this special session. We've lost three companies in the last three months. We've had a company just in the last few days announce that it's going to drop 70,000 policies just as we enter hurricane season in order to try to stay alive. And we're not even sure that's going to work. So, you know, basically the Office of Insurance Regulation is pumping the chest of about six to 12 companies in the state right now, trying to keep them alive um, because they're, they're, they're close to death. Now, it's, it's interesting you use that analogy, close to death, because when a company does die, we now learn that the Department of Financial Services actually performs an autopsy to determine the cause of death. They do perform an autopsy. The problem is nobody reads it. And what we found out is, you know, that even the Office of Insurance Regulation doesn't even sometimes get a copy of it, nor does the consumer advocate get a copy of it. And frankly, only a couple of legislators, including myself, have gotten copies of previous reports. And so it's, you know, they do this autopsy and it's shoved in a file someplace. But this should be a document that lays out, here was the problems, here's what caused it, and frankly, here's what the solution is. Well, as someone who has actually looked at these reports, I think it was you who's requested them in the past. I also think Representative Ken Jenny from down here in South Florida, he's, he's tried to do his due diligence on some of these. What do you learn from looking at those autopsy reports of previous insurance companies that have failed? Well, I think that the number one thing you've learned is that we aren't asking the right questions and we aren't diving deep enough and we aren't providing real actionable, uh, uh, real actionable points for the state to take in order to ensure that failures don't occur in the, in the future. Listen, if a plane crashes anywhere in the country, we're going to send a team of FAA investigators to do a deep dive into why that plane crashed so that it never happens again. Yet in the state of Florida, we don't do anything like that when a hundred million dollar property insurance crashes um, and basically wipes out, the, you know, the and, and causes absolute havoc uh, for in thousands and thousands of individuals' lives who are now racing out and sometimes paying twice as much for property insurance than they were before. So to me, this is a really simple issue. We should be able to call the executives in. We should be able to do a deep dive in there. And within a reasonable time period, like three to six months, we should be able to reproduce a report that outlines and then lays out for legislators steps to make sure that this never happens again. Okay, but obviously we're now working under a much tighter time frame, given that the special session starts in a few days, it starts on Monday of next week. So what are some of the proposals that you would like to see enacted moving forward? Sure, a couple of things would be pretty pretty simple. One is stop stop all AOBs in Florida. Stop. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't talk, wait, be careful. AOBs, what does that stand for? The assignment of benefits. So when somebody comes up to you and says, hey, we're gonna give you a free auto glass replacement and, and all, we'll take care of everything with your insurance company, just sign this document and move on down the road. That kind of thing is the AOB. What's happening in the roof with roofs is, hey, just sign this document and we'll take over roof. We'll, we'll take over all the, the the problems with your roof and we'll go sue your insurance company on your behalf. That has just caused a wave of litigation that is unlike any other state in the country. And frankly, Texas and North Carolina have shut off AO, all assignment of benefits. And so basically, what it says is you insurer and insured have to work together to solve this problem. You can't just bring in a third party and let them let them file a lawsuit and move on down the road. On your, on your well, let me let me let me push back a little bit there. The insurance company has teams of lawyers, they have experts, they have all the weight on their side in terms of how to work or game the system. If I, as a consumer, 
am in a bad situation because of a storm and I've got roof damage and I'm a little overwhelmed, does it not benefit me to have somebody fighting on my side to, to move forward? You can absolutely have somebody fighting on your side. We have public adjusters. We have other individuals out there that can be advocates for individuals. But frankly, it's the and, and frankly, you know, the, it's the assignment of benefits, though, that has that that Florida tried to curtail a few years ago with a major piece of legislation. But now what we've seen is the, they've just gotten around it by using directions to pay or other mechanisms to, to get essentially what we were to right back where we were before the assignment of benefit law even passed. In so fact, there was is, more are, assignment of benefits are, last year than there are this year than there was back when we passed the law a few years ago. So these essentially are law firms that make their business out of filing lawsuits against insurance companies by signing up as many people as possible. They want to go out and manufacture claims. And so their job is to hire roofers and public adjusters to come to your house and, and go into homes that are all 20 years old, have 20 year old roofs in the same subdivision and go door to door to door and say there was a storm two years ago, we can replace your roof for a brand new roof for just the price of your insurance deductible. So what ends up happening is you and I are buying our neighbor's roofs and we're paying for it in higher insurance premiums. Well, again, let me push back. It seems as if the, the, when this idea came forward in the Senate during the regular session, the House was pushing back because the one of the possible outcomes of this is that if you start to require, for instance, uh, homeowners to start putting money away for roofs eventually, the, at the end of the day, it's going to end up being the homeowner who pays more and the insurance company who has to pay less. Is that really a system that we want? Well, no, what we, what we want is a system where both parties are working out and really dealing with catastrophic losses, not maintenance. And what's happening in Florida now is people are seeing their property insurance as a home maintenance agreement and not as a catastrophic loss agreement uh, designed for hurricanes and other acts of God. What's, but, and, but if we're out replacing 20 year old roofs on your insurance policy, then we're in real trouble because there's no way that you and I can, are going to be able to afford to live in our homes because shortly we're going to be able to, we're going to be paying more in our insurance premiums to buy our neighbor's roofs than we are in our mortgage. That's just a simple to, truth. I, I don't want to get into a big discussion about reinsurance because I don't want the viewer's eyes to glaze over, but essentially reinsurance is the insurance that insurance companies buy so that if there is a catastrophic loss, they've got some backup. Right now, reinsurance is one of the most expensive things driving up the cost of property insurance. What can be done about bringing down the helping insurance companies essentially buy cheaper reinsurance themselves, which they could then pass the savings on to consumers? What reinsurers are telling Florida is we don't want to do business in the state because we, it's, it's not a good business to be in. Um, and the, so they're, they're basically telling the state, we're, we're going to take a pass this year, or you're going to pay a lot more, and, and you're, they're just passing that on to their customers. And so we've got to be able to deal with this insurance market. But frankly, the insurance industry, if we just fix the reinsurance piece without dealing with the litigation piece, like ultimately, we're just going to be subsidizing as a state more and more of the reinsurance piece, and, and that's going to be a disaster in the future. What we've got to do is fix the underlying litigation issues. So deal with AOBs, deal with actual cash value on roofs. Listen, if you go out and get a car accident in your 2010 Toyota Corolla, your, your insurance company is not going to buy you a brand new 2022 Toyota Corolla. They're going to give you the cash value for your old car. And so, so the same principle should apply with roofs if you chose that type of option. But you should be able to choose that type of option in Florida. Um, and carriers should be able to offer you that type of option in Florida. Today, they have to offer you replacement cost. They have to replace that 20 year old roof with a brand new roof. Just like if you had to, if you were buying car insurance and you had to buy, you had to buy uh, insurance that bought you a brand new car for a 2010 Toyota Corolla, every time your, your car got 10 or 15 years old, magically it would get into an accident and you'd have to go get a brand new car and your insurance company would pay for it. This is the kind of fool's errand that Florida has found itself in where we basically incentivize people to commit fraud. Well, do you, will you end up with a bunch of people after storms having not enough money to actually replace their roofs and being in a worse situation at the end of the day? 
No, because people should, if they have 20 year old roofs, they should be reserving funds for the replacement of that roof that should ultimately have, oh, have to happen. Oh, oh come, come on, on Senator. Senator. Well, no, you and I both know homeowners aren't, aren't right now with cost of everything from gasoline and all the complaints about inflation. How are you saving money for roofs? Here's the challenge. You have an insurance company that says, listen, we're only going to, we're only going to um, insure your property if you put a brand new roof on it. We have, I have constituents who are having to get a brand new roof and their roof is not more than 10 years old. So they're in the same boat. The problem is there wasn't a storm. It's just a Thursday and they're being forced to buy a brand new roof just to get insurance coverage. So there's no way that you, you're going to, you're going to have to deal with this one way or the other. And if you deal with it with assignment of benefits at le or, or, or actual cash value, at least the incentives are aligned. Right now, the incentives are the totally the other way. The incentive is file a claim versus reserve money for my roof, which is ultimately going to have to be replaced. Listen, I'm somebody who is, believes that we should treat adults like adults. And if people are homeowners, they're adults, and they should be able to make adult decisions. And, that, and if they choose to go get a replacement cost on their house um, for their roof, that's their choice, and they'll pay a little bit higher premium for that. But if they choose actual cash value, and that's what's offered to them, and they choose to, to, to get that on their roofs, then they should be able to do that as well. But we shouldn't be put, we should be taking, we shouldn't be forcing pacifiers into Floridian's mouth and saying, listen, you're not responsible enough to have an actual cash value policy. We're going to force you to take a replacement cost value policy. That like, that's just treating adults like children. When we come back, we turn again to Surfside. 